Welcome everybody to this one of our six part series on JMC grading options in JMC for 2022. Let's start that again. Welcome to another installment of our six grading options in JMC. This is an exciting one. It's very broadly used using the CBG module to track formative assessment results and report them summatively as a course grade. I'm glad to be with you today. My name is Paul Freed. I am the lead trainer at JMC. I've been with JMC for about 17 years and I'm happy to be with you here today. The CBG module meets the needs of middle schools and high schools that want to track formative assessment results of priority standards, but transfer those results summatively to an overall course grade. Today, as part of the six ways of grading series, we'll cover using the CBG module to calculate results to a course grade. Here's what's on the agenda. Defining a proficiency scale, adding an assessment area, adding a formative assessment, competency-based grading calculation options refresher, and scoring formative assessments in the competency-based grade book, also known as CBG here at the JMC world. Middle schools and high schools that are bridging the gap between competency-based grading, which also can be called standards-based grading, standards reference grading, whatever you want, and traditional letter grading reporting. You know what? I just... Test one, two, there we go, okay. Welcome to another part of the six part and grading series here at JMC. We have this one, blah, blah, blah. Thank you for joining us everybody for another webinar. This is a part of the six part grading series in JMC called using the CBG module to track formative assessment results and report them summatively as a course grade. Welcome, my name is Paul Freed. I'm the lead trainer here at JMC. I've been with JMC for 17 years and uh, this is one of my favorite features in the JMC teacher program. The CBG module meets the needs of middle schools and high schools that want to track formative assessment results of priority standards, but transfer those results summatively to an overall course grade. Today, as part of the six ways of grading series, we'll cover using the CBG module to calculate results to a course grade. Here's what's on the agenda. Defining a proficiency scale, adding an assessment area, adding a formative assessment, competency-based grading calculation options refresher, and scoring formative assessments in the competency-based grading gradebook, which we call CBG. Middle schools and high schools that are bridging the gap between competency-based grading, also called standards-based grading here in JMC, and traditional letter grade reporting can have their cake and eat it too. Since many schools still report out letter grades for GPA and college entrance purposes, JMC gives teachers the ability to track progress on standards and provide the feedback that moves learning forward and converts all of that information to a letter grade without double entry or additional calculation, because we know your time is valuable and the tools should work for you. Calculating summative results from competency-based grading takes some basic setup. Let's break the setup into three parts. First, defining your proficiency scale. It's the first one right here. A proficiency scale is made up of multiple assessment proficiencies or results. Define all possible proficiencies to ensure a complete scale. Second, adding an assessment area. An assessment area is a logic container for multiple formative assessments. Create an assessment area to tie them together. And third, adding a formative assessment. A formative assessment is the learning target that contributes to the standard or assessment area. Add multiple formative assessments, learning targets, for, for the assessment area standard to form a learning progression. So these are just the general ideas that we want you to understand as you maybe move forward on this particular option. So if anybody has any questions, and actually, you know, th this is one that I like to go through, just type in questions as we go. And if you have some, please let me know. So defining your proficiency scale. In JMC teacher head to comments based grading, define formative assessments. Step one, select a course from the course dropdown list right here to begin setting up results and adding assessments for a course. Step two, select a number from the number of results dropdown list to begin creating the standard based result definitions. Fun fact, the number of results refers to how many proficiencies are in your proficiency scale. For example, if your proficiency scale is meets, developing, beginning, and incomplete, you would select four 
in the number of results. And the 4321 scale is becoming quite popular nationwide. Um, so if people don't know what to use, that's, that's a popular one uh, to do. Step three, click the edit link in a proficiency row to begin defining result in your proficiency scale. Step four, select a color from the color dropdown list to correspond with your comp space grading result. Helpful tip, unique colors for each proficiency result make reviewing student progress reports easier as families can look for patterns of colors to understand their students' learning progress. And, you know, we kind of are fans here. I think um, Jake uh, Van Scoy says like stoplight or whatever it might be like red, yellow, green, or you could do, you know, and, and you could do red, yellow, orange, green, whatever you want, but something that indicates to families pretty easily what it is. So I, I would stay away from magenta and pink and things like that because some families might interpret that differently than others. But again, it's totally customizable. You can do it however you want. Step seven, enter a description for the result in the description field to correspond with your competency-based result. Again, this is something that's helpful for families to be able to understand what are you talking about here with what does this A mean here? Step eight, place a check mark in the proficiency target checkbox to set the result as a proficiency target. Now, most people don't do this, but here's the fun fact. When selecting the proficiency target checkbox, enter proficiency target number in the calculate options box to set the number of times a student needs to reach the proficiency target before they're considered proficient for that formative assessment. So what does that mean? This is again, it's optional. That's why we have it listed right here. If you're a person who cho chooses a calculation option of proficiency target, I mean, they've got to hit the target two or three times, you would check this box. It, in my experience of working with schools, most don't choose the proficiency target uh, option. So I would hold off on that your first time around, unless you absolutely know that that's going to be the calculation option you want. Step nine, place a check mark in the exempt checkbox to prevent results from contributing to the final calculation. Now, again, this is optional, but this is an option we added in, I don't know, three or four years ago, because it, the, the thing to note here is that you can, this is a helpful tip, you can use the exempt option for an incomplete, insufficient information, or not turned in result to communicate the information to all stakeholders without being punitive. Meaning that, hey, I, I just want to put some results in that communicate something, but it's not going to have a value that calculates to an assignment score and then to summatively to a course grade. Step 11, click the update link to save the result or cancel, of course, to discard the changes. Okay, so I'm actually going to stop there because there's a lot in that little part there. So let's show you that part first, and then we'll keep on rolling here. So I'm in my JMC teacher, and again, this is a setup step, probably the hardest of the setup steps. It's not hard, but it, it takes a little time to do. So we're going to go under comments based grading to define formative assessments. Here's one class. I'm going to use an example. It's my science class. Let's say I'm going to give four results here. I'm going to come in here. Uh, and let's say maybe I'm going to do five, right? Because one's going to be exempt. I'll do my five here. And it's the same for every one here. So I'm just going to use some examples here. My highest one is I'm going to edit this. It's going to be a green. And the name here is going to be uh, P for proficient. And I'm going to give a value of four. Now, the value is important because that's the number of points the student will receive on that particular assignment that's created on the assignment score screen. We'll show you how that's all connected, right? JMC does all this work behind the scenes for you. And, um, and I'll show you how that's done. And so that description there is going to be proficient. Okay, just like that. We have spell check, which I like. There we go. And then you can update that. And then we come down to the next one. Maybe it's going to be a yellow one here. And again, you can use the color picker to pick whatever you want. And maybe it's going to be NP for near proficiency or whatever it might be. I'll do three. And then you could, again, write out the description there just to save time. I'm not going to put that in there as well. And then we're going to do an edit here. And I'm going to make this one orange here. And this is um, uh, uh, nearing, I don't know, NG, nearing grade level. Of course, I'm just trying to show you how to, how to make that up there. And then, oops, I'm going to put add a, uh, a number that, so that's going to be worth two points. I'm going to update that. And I'm going to edit this. And I'm going to make this red. Okay. And maybe this is uh, below grade level, BGL or something like that. I'm going to give it one here. And we'll do this. Now, you can, again, add items in that aren't scored, right? Again, if a kid is exempt, they were missing, whatever it might be, that can be really helpful to communicate well with families. Again, the sky's limit. You can do whatever you want. And this is where you might use a different color here. Maybe I'm going to use a purple here. And I'm going to say that this student is EX for exempt. I'll make this as an exempt item, and I type in here exempt. Now, I did not fill in all the descriptions here just for time's sake. Um, but that's what that would look like there. So that's that's example of how a course could look. I have another one here. 
my math course, it's a little bit more filled out here. I've got in here my 4321, AGL, N and B. So it's above grade level, grade level proficiency, nearing proficiency here, below grade level proficiency and not assessed. That's a very common style that you sure could copy if you wanted to there as well. So you would do this again for each course that you have in your course dropdown list. If you have the same one or very similar one, you can use the copy to all classes button there to copy it to all your classes. All right, let's get back to it. All right, then you're going to set your grade cutoff scale. Now, if you've used the JMC teacher before, you understand that you need to put grade cutoffs in to determine um, how your grade is calculated on an A through F grading scale or a 1 through 12 grading scale or 1 through 4, whatever you want, totally up to you. Um, but you do need to do this. If you've never done this before, um, I'm going to do a brief overview of how it's done. Uh, but you also could join us for one of our new teacher trainings, uh, which is going to go over how to set up the gradebook overall uh, to do summative grading. That's every Wednesday in August from nine to noon uh, as a webinar. Uh, you can sign up on your JMC homepage. But I'm going to so I'm going to briefly go through it to you. And most people already do this, but um, uh, if you're new to it, you can watch this. It probably will give you what you need. If you not need a extra instruction, you can join us for one of those webinars. So first, when you're setting your grade scale cutoffs right here, you're going to go ahead to scores grade cutoffs and create cutoffs to correspond to proficiency scale with a check mark placed in the use point value grade scale checkbox to bypass the use of, per use of percentages here, right? The idea is we're moving towards standards-based grading. So we don't want to be using percentages here, although it does work, just so you know, you, you wouldn't have to check this and you can put your percentages in here. Uh, we just feel that if you're going to be grading on a point scale system, like a four point grade system here, you probably want to take advantage of our use our point value grade scale where it's going to de determine the overall grade based on a point value system, not on a percentage system. Okay. And then this next one here is utilize a standard based grading letter grade conversion scale similar to Marzano 2010 standard to letter grade conversion scale to enter grade cutoffs. That's one of the ones that he has listed here. You can pause the video if you want to see how he's got listed there. You can check it out in that particular one there. Just do a Google search for that. I have another more basic example in my live um, one that I'll list there. Okay. So let me show you that and I'll see if anybody has any questions about that here. So we'll come in here. I'm going to go under scores to grade cutoffs. Here it is. I've got my math class here. I simply came in here and I added a grade cutoff in. I gave it whatever I want, A, B, C, whatever it might be there, and put the cutoff in. Now, because I've chosen the use a point value grade scale system here and save that, I would have to put something under a four point because the grade scale max is a four point there. And you'll see, so I, if I wanted to, I could put in here, oh, it's going to tell me I, I need to do a number that's greater than that. So if I wanted to put in here, you know, a D minus, I could put in a uh, 1.75 or something like that. And I can save that. And that would save that listed right here. But I'm going to delete that. I'm just going to show you, you just simply come in here, add a grade cutoff, put the grade in, put the cutoff in there. Got to be a number smaller than here and use that. Again, we, we, we reference Marzano because it's just great to have a starting point. Because if you come here and you've never done this before, you're going to be like, well, what do my numbers need to be? So I put a basic one in here. A four is an A, a three is a B, a two is a C, a one is a D, and a zero is an F. If you still give an F, um, you don't have to, right? If I don't want to give a F, I could delete this and I could put in here that the lowest scale is a zero. So that from zero to two, my student would get a D. But let's say you still give Fs, right? We're high school, students still have the opportunity to be able to do that. You sure could do that. Give a one here, add another grade cutoff, choose from the grades that are listed in the office, put your cutoff in there of a zero, and then you're good to go. But the key is using that point value grade scale because then it, it again, it, um, it calculates the grade based on the cutoff that's listed here. And I can have different cutoffs for different courses. Like for my science class here, I can still use percentages if I want, because maybe I just want to test out this point value grade scale and CVG in one of my classes. Or if you use these grade cutoffs in multiple classes, you sure can click copy and copy that to other classes as well. Totally up to you, very versatile, very easy to use. So. And that actually answers, I see a question came in from Katie. Katie asked that question, hey, can I still use percentages in one of my classes? And can I use the, the point value grade skill in another class? You absolutely can, um, you know, but it's per course, right? So you'd say, hey, these courses are gonna be my point value grade skill. 
The other ones will be percentages. Totally up to you how you want to do it. You can even change it from term to term if you want. Like this is my math quarter one. And if I want to for math quarter two, I could go back to percentage system. Wouldn't necessarily recommend that just because you don't want to confuse your families and all the stakeholders, but um, it sure can be done. Really just showing you the flexibility of the grading system. So great question, Katie. Thanks for sending that in. All right, let's keep on rolling here. Now we go back to the CBG module for adding an assessment area. That's the setup steps, right? Now we're gonna get into adding the, the items that are assessed. An assessment area is the logic container for multiple formative assessments. Create an assessment area to tie them together. Step one, click the add button next to the assessment area dropdown list to enter a new standard. Step two, enter a standard name in the assessment area name field to create a new assessment area to be assessed. Step three, choose the calculated to an assignment score radio button in the assessment area type box to use the CBG module to calculate to a letter grade. This is where the, 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 the magic happens. You'll wanna check that checkbox or that, that radio button there because that means we're gonna take whatever in here and calculate it to an assignment score. Fun fact, the category weight is a ratio that weighs the assessment area against the other assessment areas right here, right? So here's that category weight that's listed in there. So every category on your categories assignment screen, which I'll show you in a little bit, can have a weight to it if you're a person who grades with weights. And so if you want everything to be equal, you could leave a category weight of one in there, but you sure could do a 10 for 10%, to 20 for 20%, whatever you want to do to weight it there. It's Your category assignment screen functions exactly the same from these scores that are carried over there. Here we go. If all category weights are set to the default of one, each assessment area will be weighted equally to one another when calculating a grade. Again, kind of the easiest way to do it if you're just dipping your toes in this process. Step four, click the save button to save the assessment area or click the close button to discard the change. Of course, you would click save there, okay? Let's see if there's any questions about that. You put them in there, but I'm gonna keep on rolling and then I'll show how to add in. Actually, I'll show how to add the assessment area here as we go. Simply, simply come in here, go back to my JMC home screen. Comments-based grading, define formative assessments. Here's my math class right here. I've got understands the place value system here. That's when I simply came in here. I edited it here. I came and typed in understands the place value system. You can type in whatever you want. That's that container and choose this box that says calculated to an assignment score. Again, just to, to save time here, I'm not gonna add a new one in, but here's where you come in, type it in here choose this one right here and click save. If you wanna add a category weight that's different than one, you sure can do that there. But I'm just gonna keep my same one here, which is you understands the place value system as my example that's listed there. And I see another question come in from John. Yes, John, this is totally customizable. You can do whatever assessment area you want and you can have multiple assessment areas there. So great question from John coming in here. And so I would just add them in. I've got two listed here, I can read and write. I'm sorry, I've got two listed under here. We'll get to the formative assessment next. So let's keep on rolling here. Adding a formative assessment. A formative assessment is the learning target that contributes to the standard or assessment area. Add multiple formative assessments, learning targets for the assessment area standard to form a learning progression there. So again, you can assess them multiple times. Click the add button below the formative assessment box to add a formative assessment for the selected assessment area. Step two, enter a formative assessment name for the current assessment in the area in the formative assessment field to associate the assessment with a standard. Okay, I'll actually go back to that. This is your learn, your, your standard, your, your goal, your learning target. This is what they're being assessed on. So again, sky's limit, you can name it whatever you want there, but you wanna name something that can be understandable to your average parent and guardian and student. So when they're looking online at a progress report, they can see that information that's listed there. Hey, here's, the, here's what we want them to hit, identify elements of the periodic table. Step three, select a radio button next to the appropriate option on the calculation options box to set the calculation option that best fits your grading philosophy. And step four, select the number of times you want, excuse me, select the number of times you are formatively assessing the learning target for the form, number of assessments dropdown list to create multiple assessment opportunities for your students. So what we're doing here is I've named it. Here's my, my standard I want them to hit or target here. Here's my calculation options. And here's the number of assessments that we're going to do. I'm going to assess them five times throughout the term. Now, not sure how many times you're going to formatively assess a benchmark. No problem. Simply add to the number of assessments as needed. 
Then you'll simply uh, end, end, enter the end of term date in the date field or simply click the calendar icon here. It doesn't have to be the end of term date. What, what happens is when it places an assignment, I mean, that's what we recommend. So I think it's a good thing to do, but whatever makes sense to you, it's actually the date that's listed as an assignment on the assignment score screen. So if you know, hey, it's October 1st today, we're gonna wrap up all five of these assessments by the 17th of October, you could put that date listed there uh, if you want to as well. You can kind of see how that works. Again, that you're really just communicating to families when is that assignment being um, assessed uh, throughout the term. Kind of maybe what's the, the reason we put that that end of term date in there is that if you're saying, hey, I'm assessing this and at the end of the term, I'll be giving the final assessment if the kid is proficient or not, so on and so forth. And step six is click the save button to add the formative assessments as a calculated benchmark result or the cancel button when finished adding formative assessments. So let's take a live look at setting up the CBG module to calculate a course grade here. If you have any questions, you sure can type them in here. So here I am, just to tell you again, I'm on my comments-based grading to define formative assessment screen. I've got my understands the place value system here. I'm simply going to come in here and click add. And now I'm going to put a formative assessment name. This is the target I want them to hit. So understands the place value system here, okay? I'm going to put in here... Um, uh, I'm going to make this up, so you, this might not be a great example. Can look, uh, or actually can um, define a number with a three decimal. Oops, there we go. Place value system. Okay, gotta make it sound kind of smart. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna assess this three times throughout the term. I'm gonna put the last day of the term in here. I'm doing this in the summer, I'm, I'm, uh, but I want you to pretend like it's the fall, right? So we're gonna say, okay, the end of our term is maybe uh, October 29th, right? And then we've got the calculation options. This is the real power of the JMC comps based grading module. And I know if you've listened to Jake Van Scoy talk about this, he's our other great trainer uh, that, that really specialized in this. He said, you know, he could probably spend a half hour talking about these, but I'm just going to highlight them for you as well. So the first one is high scores. It defaults that whatever number you put in here, it will take uh, that number of high scores and give as the overall grade to a student on the assignment score. So very common to do a number one as the highest score there. So it'll take whatever the highest score a student has. So if a student has a one, a two, a three, and a four as their scores, it will take the four because that's their highest score. If I put a two in here, just to note here, what it will do is it will actually take the two highest scores and it will average them. So not my favorite when it comes to standards-based grading, but it's possible for you to do that. Again, we're giving you lots of flexibility. Okay, it's very similar to the most recent score. Some people like the most recent score. They want to take the first most recent score. The, the, one, the reason that people will do this more commonly in my mind um, is because it's not that you want to penalize a student if they, if they are if they know something, come back to it. But sometimes people will assess students five or six times throughout the term with this number of assessments that you can do here. And then the last column will be, they'll go in there and they'll just say, here's what a student's going to get. I wanna be the determiner of what that final result of that's gonna be, that's gonna to transfer to an assignment score screen that's listed there. So totally up to you if you wanna do it. To me, it's totally, if, if, if you like that, you sure can do that, but use these tools as they make sense to you. Decaying average, very popular in the standards-based grading world here. Um, you can do a little Google search if you want to. What is a decaying average? Lots of great articles out there. I'm not gonna go too deep into it. Um, so I'm gonna give kind of a summary of what it does and it's not 100% um, on the money, you've got to read a little bit what the calculation is here. But if I put an 80% in here, in essence, what it does is it takes 80% of the most recent score and then takes the rest of the scores and adds 20% of that weight. And then it will put the, the, the value, this value right here, based on that calculation on the assignment score there. So again, if I've got that 80%, maybe that's too high for some folks, maybe they'll do 60%, 60% of the most recent score. So if I had three scores here, the third score will have a weight of 60% and the first two will have a weight of 40%. Now that's that's not exactly how it is. You can check it out again, decaying average, exactly how that is there because it actually does a little bit more fancy stuff with those first two scores. Um, 
to make it even more dynamic, uh, but we have that option listed there for you as well. And then a proficiency target. And this is what I was talking about before is that if I put a one in here or a, usually it would be actually a two for proficiency target, I've got to check one of these as a proficiency target. And that's been done on here, which means a student needs to get four, or excuse me, two right here of the proficiency target, which is an A here, a point of four points, before it will give them that four points on their assignment score screen. So again, this one isn't used quite as much, um, but some schools do really like, they say they wanna show multiple proficiencies to the learning target before they give the student that, um, that assessment that they have earned. Uh, so that again, really easy to use. Uh, I refer here again to Jake because he is the, 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 the standards-based grading guru here. And he has said, you know what, when he's talked to now hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of teachers, every school should be able to find one of these that fits your, um, your grading criteria. Um, because th their options are there for you. They fit the different standards-based grading philosophies that are out there. So choose the one that best fits your needs. You can always edit them actually as you're going through the term if you, if you want to play with it a little bit, um, but lots of great options to be able to come in there and do that. Then once you're done, you simply click save and you're good to go. And that's what sets it up. I now have three items here. I've got can define a number with a three decimal place value system. I can read, write, and compare decimals to the thousands. I know a number is 10 times bigger to the right and 0 0.10 to the left. So those are my three grading options that I have listed there. Okay. All right. I don't see any questions. This is, this is again, this is the real power. Come in, check that out. You can even do a little Google searching, watch somebody that has a video on decaying average, whatever it might be. And that can be helpful there for you. But you're the one that's in control. And again, it can be different for each course. All right, then we've got, oh, you know what? I went into this, I got into it early. I looked at this, but I, I think I'll, I'll just go through this quickly. There's the, the power of the CBG module lies within the five calculation options. I apologize, I got way to it, but this will help to refresh it. A key feature of the comp space grading module is the calculation options. The versatility of JMC CBG calculation option allows teachers of any philosophy to put best practices in action. Whether we're calculating CB results to a course grade or reporting CB results to a standards-based report card, these calculation options will help you give students the feedback they need to move forward. We've looked at that already here. So we've talked about the high score here. You actually, in the YouTube video, you can actually download this presentation. So I'm not going to go through, uh, again, I might hit on the decaying average one more time here, but this just takes the highest score. There are averages, the two highest scores, most recent scores as well, right? Very similar. Takes one for the most recent score there. You want to put that in there. The decaying average, I'm going to, I'm going to just read this one off here. It's a, uh, in a blend of philosophical approaches, the decaying average option allows teachers to apply a level of value to early evidence of learning while placing the emphasis on the most recent evidence. Decaying average uses a formula to apply more weight to the recent performance while including results from the first attempts in the average listed there. So that's a more succinct explanation. Oh, here we go. For example, if a learning target is assessed five times and the decaying percent average percentage is set to 80, the calculated result will include 80% of the most recent score applying the average of the four assessments to the count for the 20% of the result listed there. We talked about the proficiency target as well. It sets the number of times that they need to hit that there as well. So as I said before, when you utilize this, you need to choose one as a proficiency target. So I looked at those already, got a little ahead of myself because I was so darn excited. So I'm not gonna take a live look, but you can again download this if you wanna look at those options there again. So great, and no questions there. So let's get to scoring formative assessments in the CBG module. So as Rick Wormley says, students can learn without grades, but they can't learn without timely descriptive feedback, right? And we want feedback that moves learning forward. The purpose of competence-based grading or standards-based grading is to eliminate the barriers to learning associated with scores and percentages and get students to focus on learning. Now that you have set up your proficiency scales and defined your standards and learning targets, you're ready to use the competency-based grading module to provide feedback to students to move learning forward. Now, teachers head to competence-based grading, score formative assessments to get started. Step one, select the course you want here. Step two, select the assessment area. Those are the ones that you created there. Step three, select the learning target from the formative assessment drop-down list to give students feedback through James Seek. And you set all these up just moments ago. Fun fact, students' names and formative assessment results appear in a grid view, just like your assignment score screen, um, just like a paper grade book there, uh, with student names on the left-hand column and assessments at the top to see the most amount of information at one time. Double-click an assessment area 
date to add a date, right? So this is really important. I'm going to show you this right here. You'll, I'm, I can't do it here because I'm not in the live look, but double click on it, okay? And you can add a description and a date. It's absolutely necessary that you ask a date, add a date, not ask a date, <laughs> add a date so that you can, it will then calculate to the assignment score screen. Assessments are sorted by name or date depending on the sort assessments by a dropdown list and file preferences. So definitely go and check out that file preferences screen. So after you double click it here, it'll bring up this screen here and you can add a name and a date in here. So dates again, really important. You'll see, we just to make it simple, we have uh, assessments description like final evaluation, start of the year, mid year, that's the ones that we use to get people thinking, but you can use worksheet, you know, test, oral check-in, whatever you want to make it easy for you to do there. And that's again, you're adding descriptions so families can understand when were they um, assessed? How were they assessed? Step five, click a field under the assessment uh, to select a result from the drop-down list listed right there. Helpful tip, check out these awesome capabilities and features. Click the links in the right side of the page to utilize the following options. So I kind of br brushed by this, but you're just going to click and put in the scores there. I'll show you how to do that. But here's some, here's some of the bells and whistles I like to call them. Once you give a student a score, you can, get, you can click the quick link, edit score note. Click this link to add a note to the selected score. An asterisk will appear next to the score with notes in JMC teacher and will be viewable in JMC student and JMC family. Apply the note to the selected student or to all students by clicking the corresponding button. So we can do this student or all students. So this is a great one here. This is a student here up to uh, up to 20 needs to get a start at number in the 20s uh, and progress to the 30s, right? It's a great way to get individualized feedback to the families. Fill score column, this is just a time saver. Click this link in the entire column of scores with the value in the selected score. This is a huge time saver if most or all the students have the same score. You'll give us the first student a score, then select that again, fill score column. Everybody gets a green. Then you can come and say, well, this kid got orange or yellow or whatever it might be there as well. Want to manually override the calculation, click the field in the result column and select the result. A check mark will appear in the lock checkbox to indicate that the result is manually overwritten. Remove the check mark to reset the calculation option. So that's right here, right? So if I come in here and I change the overall result here, which is going to automatically calculate based on your calculation option. If I change it, a check mark will appear here saying, hey, you're given a grade different than the student earned. I use the term learned a little loosely. If you don't, if you say, oh, I changed that, but now I want to go back to the calculation option, you can uncheck that checkbox there. So let's take a live look at scoring formative assessments in the CVG module listed there. So we'll come in here. And this is actually the last section, but I'm going to show you the payoff in just a moment here. So you can actually go here, let's move this over a little bit here, to score formative assessments by, uh, excuse me, score formative assessments here, or you can go under competency-based grading, competency grading to score formative assessments. If you're just scoring, that's the easiest place to get there, okay? We would choose our course. Here's my math course. We choose the understand the place value system, which you can choose whatever you want. You want. We choose the one I write here. Uh, let's see here. Can I, uh, I think I did this one here. There we go. Can define a number with a three decimal place value. Great. Here's my three assessments. Okay, I'm going to come in here. Now, when I change the date, actually, you'll know, I think it's going to move me to the right because that's how I have it set up under my file file preferences screen. I'm not going to go there. You can check it out on your own, but I'll come in here and put in here. What's the description here? We're going to put beginning of term assessment. Beginning of term. I'm going to put a date on here. Again, I'm going to put it like we're in October because we're starting the year off. There we go. And click save. There we go. It moves it over here because it's the most recent one. And maybe I'm going to do a midterm. This is what I had set up here before. There's my midterm, and I'm going to put that in as October 18th. There we go. And then um, I'm going to put this one in here, and this is going to be end of term. So end of term. You don't have to define them all at the beginning. I'm just doing this to show you how, kind of how it looks here. We'll put that at the 25th again. You can choose whatever dates you want here. So beginning of term, 10-4, midterm, 10-18, end of term, 10-25. Again, you want to be able to put in that... Um, you want to be able to put in that date that is necessary to be able to then calculate that over here. So let's say being the term, our kids kind of struggle a little bit. Most of them got a yellow. It actually goes down to the next one for me automatically. But let's say I want to fill a score, fill the score column on this one. Oh, there we go. Let's put it as a yellow. I'm going to go back to it. Okay. That's it's highlighted now. I'm going to go fill score column. There we go. 
I'm doing this. There we go. So all those yellows, the key is there. You choose the first one. It's going to come back to the next one because the cool thing is we add this feature to make it easy where if you want to come in here, it automatically chooses and opens it up for you. So it makes it easy for you to come in and choose whatever score you want for that student. So it makes it, I, I'll use the term harder. It's not harder, but it's just a an extra second to come back. And if you wanted to give everybody a green, I would choose that first column item that's listed there. and I could fill that score column. So let's say I fill the score column here with yellow, but not every kid has a yellow. This kid has a red, and this kid has a red, and this kid has a, whatever it might be, a green listed there, whatever it might be. You'll see how it saves those scores in the auto save screen, and it calculates here based on the highest score. We tell you that ass assessment calculation listed um, uh, right here. And so this kid got a yellow and a green, so it gives me a green. A red and a green gives me a green, because I'm taking that highest score. This one's interesting. Green regressed back here, but still keeps the green because that's the highest score that we have listed there. So that's how you score the students here in the comp space grading kit. Not hard to do, point and click, easy to roll down. You can again use that fill score column if you want. Edit a score note, really easy to do. It's just click on an item here, click edit score note, add whatever score you want in there. It's nice because it tells you who the student is and what the score is. You can do it for this student or all students that are listed there as well. You can always go back to defining formative assessments as well. And you can also score formative assessments by student, which is a new feature coming up this year uh, and, and as well. The last thing is I like that we put our, the, um, the, the marking key on the bottom so you can see what's going on with those students um, as you go uh, or as you're, as you're assessing them, you'll know, okay, just in case, like, what does this color mean or what's this number mean? Uh, that's going to be helpful for you there as well. So if I want to come to a different course here, or I mean a different goal or benchmark here. I can come to this one right here. I got a whole bunch of ones enlisted here. I can come in here. I'm going to do a beginning of term again. Da, da, da. Come here, put a date in. So this, because I just want to show you how it calculates more than one grade here. Do we're 12th and save. Okay. Um, well, this one's a proficiency target three. I'm going to choose it. Let's see if I got what this other one is here, because I'm not going to assess three times. Oh, it's got three. Well, just to show you how easy it is, I want to I want to uh, score a few, a couple times, or a couple different ways here. Um, I'll come here to define formative assessments, and I'll say, oh, for this one right here, I, I don't want that to be the proficiency target of three. Or oh, oh it's this one there. Let's try this one here. There we go. I'm going to go with the high score. I'm going to just take my highest score listed here. That, that's how easy it is to come in and change that. So let me save this. Now I'm going to go to score formative assessments here. All right. And we're going to change it to here. There we go. I'm going to give my highest score. There we go. This one here. Yellow, red. This kid is exempt. Right there. Right, like that. You'll see the exempt doesn't give any score listed right there. So now what's the payoff, right? Okay, we've done this now. I've assessed the kids here. They have these results listed here. I've assessed the students here. Here's this number system here. Well, what, what does this mean for me? Well, by going to my assignment score screen now, you'll see that they, as it loads here, those numbers are automatically transferred here. How cool is that, right? And it automatically calculates an overall course grade based on those grade cutoffs that we sent there as well. So the beauty of this whole system is you can assess students one or multiple times and all the different goals, learning targets, standards, benchmarks, whatever you want. And it will take your calculation option, automatically fill in the grade here, and then it will calculate the course grade for you. You don't have to do any of that work because the question always comes up, well, I don't want to do double entry. I don't want to have to go in and, and do it both places. You don't just assess the students, keeps families up to date on what they're doing. So it's really a great way to do that. Just like assignment scores, you do need to come in here and publish the assignments for families to be able to see them online. It says 19 records because it's actually doing the 19 that I have from here and from here as well. Okay, it's taking that whole course that's listed there. And if I go to my assignment score screen, right, I would publish those uh, Publish those as well. Actually, it does it at the same time. So I'll publish them as well, but that you can do that here if you want to. So this will do it, but um, it, it publishes those into the assignment score. So then when families come online, right, and they're going to see uh, a progress report, it shows the score they got, a four, but also shows the comp space grading score we have there as well. So here's the understands the place value system. The kid is getting a four, which is great. Okay? But here, and here's that calculated result that's listed. I'm sorry, that's the point possible. He's not getting a four. His score is a three. 
uh, because he's got a three out of four points that's listed right there. That's giving him that one right there. This one's not been assessed yet right here. And this one was assessed that's listed right there. So a really cool way to see how it goes and takes that, that item there. This kid has two threes. That's why it has two threes that are listed there. The student, Jenny, has a four and a three. If I click on Jenny's progress report that's listed here, you'll see Jenny has an A here, right, for the green and a GL here for this one right there. So she got a four listed right here and a three right here as well. It's really handy. Families love to look at those progress reports and see the colors, right? And that's helpful there. Now, one other thing you'll notice, actually, let me go back here to a student here. It's got a three and a one here. Is at the bottom of the progress report is the marking key. We do allow you to tell, uh, tell JMC, what do you want listed here? Do you want the color and the symbol, the color and the number? What do you want there? We, we display all of them down here as well. Again, totally up to you how you want to manage that, but that is managed under that file down to preferences screen here. Under file to preferences right here, we can sort assessments by date from oldest, newest or newest to oldest, whatever you want there. And then the result display, as I have said, is net name and color, but you can do the color only if you want or the value. Again, it's totally up to you as a teacher to decide what you want the families to be able to see. So lots of great options there for you. All right, so now, as we've been doing at the end of all of these here, we help people try to still decide which end of term reporting options best for your school. So we have some guiding questions and guiding thoughts here. First, plan a path forward. Your school's grading journey should begin with the end in mind. Work with your team to decide on which of the six innovation, innovative solutions for calculating and reporting student progress and use our resources to move forward. I always say, you know, what do you want on a report card? That's a great starting point. All right, we want this report card. All right, now are we using comments-based grading? Are we using assignment scores, summative, whatever you want? Do we want a standards-based report card? What do you want first? That helps to guide you. And I'll, I have some guiding questions here at the end of this that um, if you've seen it before, you can skip it, but if you haven't, it will help to guide you. Second, standards-based or course grade report cards. Each school in your district can have distinct reporting goals. The report cards you intend to provide to families will help you determine which type of grading solution you'll choose, which is reinforcing what I just said. Um, the other thing to note is that even in grade levels, right, kindergarten PK through four can have a standards-based report card, and then five through eight can have a course grade report card for summative grading. Whatever you want, JMC can accommodate. And then, or you have the third option, feedback without a summative grade. Do you have some educators who are interested in standards-based grading, but your school isn't ready to transition? The JMC teacher CBG module will allow those teachers to give ongoing feedback with without affecting course grade calculations. So guiding questions for you. If you've not seen this before, you might find it interesting and helpful. If you have, you could skip to the end of this video. We've got just some uh, upcoming uh, news there. But if you've done this before, you probably could stop the video and move on to the next one if you'd like. Question one, would your school like an in-depth report card that includes standards, proficiencies, and detailed comments about a student's performance? Has your school identified priority standards for each grade level and, and subject? If you answer yes to questions one and two, join us May 1st and 31st, uh, June 1st, to explore these three tracking options for standards-based report cards, okay? We actually have now done these three, so you can watch them on YouTube. You can watch entering summative results on your standards-based report card on our YouTube playlist, watch calculating assignment score results to a standards-based report card also on YouTube, and watch using the CBG module to track formative assessment results and report them on a standards-based report card as well. Three really great uh, options there for you. Question three, would your school like a one-page report card that reports all overall course grades for multiple courses with brief comments for each course? I call this a standard report card or, or middle school, high school style report card. Does your school value GPAs, class rank, honor roll, et cetera? If you answer yes to questions three and four, join us on June 2nd and June 8th. We'll explore these two tracking options, reporting course grades. Today, you're part of this one, June 8th, utilizing points and percentages to calculate a course grade. If you're watching this on YouTube, you missed that one on June 8th. It's on the YouTube playlist as well. Is your school unconcerned with end of term reporting as long as stakeholders can track student progress throughout the year? If you answered yes to question five, join us on June 3rd, and we'll explore an, this option for tracking formative assessments. June 3rd is use the CBJ module to track formative assessment results for feedback purposes. Now that you've got a better understanding of JMC six grain solutions, let's dig into exploring how you can implement the solution that best works for your district needs. So on June 16th, everything from implementation to rollout to executing the solution to your district all in one jam pack session. It's myself, Jake Van Scoy, and Sarah. Uh, we've been, worked with thousands of, uh, tens of thousands of users and probably thousands of schools to help them uh, 
think about this. And so you'll kind of hear our, our guiding practices, best practices for moving forward for each item that's listed there. All right, JMC news and upcoming events. Attend JMC summer conference and earn a pizza party for your school. Calling all JMC office users. Attend JMC summer conference and earn a pizza party for your school. From May 2nd, 2022 to July 31st, 2022, the building that sends the most attendees to one of our in-person summer conferences wins a pizza party for their building. If you have not seen the, the summer conference, um, uh, it's on the home screen of the JMC office. It also, if you go to our widget and search for JMC um, summer conference lineup, it's actually just summer conference lineup, it's listed right there. Overall, JMC's training team is back for a summer full of training from new administrators to teachers to office folks. We have training just for you. So grab a pal and check out all of our summer training opportunities to ensure you hit the ground running this fall. Sign up for any or all of our conferences today by searching for summer conference lineup using our in-app widget. Also, we're looking for two passionate part-time client service specialists in Southern Iowa. As a client service specialist, you'll develop meaningful relationships with our users through communication, training, support. In return, we offer a competitive salary, the opportunity to remote work remotely. It's 20 to 30 hours per month, a great way to stay in touch with education if you're done working in the school. Uh, we have superintendents, principals, tech directors, secretaries, teachers, all kinds of folks. Read the full job posting here for further details to apply, email your resume, and letter of introduction to hr at jmcines.com with job application in the subject line. Another great way to be up, stay up to date on all things JMC is through our social media presence. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn at OnlineJMC or our blog at jmcinc.com slash news. Thanks for your time today. Thanks for choosing JMC. And I hope that you can quickly choose one of these six grade options with your entire team and start moving forward.